I could see him having trouble controlling the horse. And I could see his eyes, like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, trying to, and like, trying to stay calm. The German New Medicine guy, you know, of like a thousand brain, brain scans or a thousand whatever, you know, of somebody who has a liver thing or a kidney thing, they all had the exact same childhood event. Mm. All of them. Interesting. So it's like if, you know, if you have like liver cancer, he knows for certain that this took place to you in your life. Most people don't know anything about where we, you know, where we live. So if you do end up here, you know, it takes, it's not easy to find out about Bill Cabamba. It's this local organic market where literally Saturday morning, the, the local producers of the organic produce and fruits and so forth are harvesting like that morning or the night before at the most. But between the nature and the rivers and all that stuff and the type of people that do live here, some of the incredible people, the healers in particular, right? Like these, these amazing healers that just exude just light and love and just happiness, right? Um, and World renowned. Some of them, I mean, are known all over the world, man. You could have, you know, you have a physical ailment that's the result of something in your mind that happened. Mm -hmm. And if you resolve it either in the mind or in the body, it, it's both places are going to, by definition, resolve. Sure. At this, like they have to. What story did you tell yourself, right? Like we've, we're getting all this. The universe has got all these clues and quotes and geniuses and lords and whatever that have left it for us to either seek and find or ignore. You could interpret anything you want in any way you want, and it takes a long time to even have the realization that you have a choice. Just focus on being better than you were yesterday just it's very kind and human and like people take care of each other and are wonderful to one another and have a lot of beautiful customs and that's what makes this place awesome she kicked her shoes off and put her feet in the grass and he's like he's like i haven't done that since i was you know playing baseball as a kid it's those things that you know you don't know you know you don't know what you're missing you don't know what you don't know you don't Right. And now it's not that I take them for granted, but now I just expect and appreciate that about this place. That's what if people are looking for that. Hello and welcome back to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Jesse, Brandon, we have uh What's up guys? <laughs> I, I just I, had to I had to equalize the energy, so now we can find the middle. I don't think I can muster up that level of energy <laughs> at this particular moment. That's why I said we'll find the we'll find the, had, the middle. I just had lunch. Yeah. And it was I forgot that it was Tuesday. I was thinking it was Wednesday. Okay. So I went down to Vilka Brunch to get the tum yum. Okay. Because it's freaking delicious. It is quite delicious. They were closed, and I thought it was that afternoon time they closed before dinner. So you just waited. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to the office, and then I'm thinking, like, what should I eat? And, you know, there's Maya's, which I really like, and there's dumplings and noodles. And then it dawned on me that it is Tuesday and not Wednesday, and there's nothing open. There was very few options on Tuesdays. So we ended up, we ended up going Indian, which is good. It is good food. You ate there? We ate there. Who's we? Oh, I ate there with Jared. Okay. Who's just awesome. He is awesome. I think Jared is pretty much making the pod every episode. <laughs> we should have Jared on the pod. We should. Literally. Yeah, begin. We should do an episode yeah. with Jared. How's his nose? His nose is bitten by his dog. Yeah, that's messed up. Which there's a very funny story behind. I don't know if I can tell it, but... Yeah, uh probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's yeah. doing awesome. Yeah. Jared's good. man. How, how do you like the food? He no, we we he, ate there at the on the retreat. We ate on the yeah. retreat. He didn't, and it. And by the way, if I sounded unenthusiastic, it actually is a good restaurant. Like I mean that. The food no, it is good. I don't. Yeah. I don't know why I said it like that, but right. No, it was really good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, Jared did not eat much of his food. Okay. But I think he kind of like does that. It seems like his appetite is not robust. Right. All the time. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, even on the retreat. Yeah, there yeah some... I was noticing that mm -hmm. on the retreat. Well, of course, he also... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so we got a weed whacker over here. We got some construction going on behind us. Your daughter and her friend are getting ready to ride the horse that lives 
in the pasture below your house? Two horses. Two horses. That's right. Well, you guys training. bought a second. They're one. training horses. So they're, yeah, they've been, you know, these are never ridden horses that they're, well, at least one of them, where they're going through all the training to get them desensitized to like loud sounds and being startled so that they are feasible for riding. So they're, she ro- actually bell rolled Sky for the first time this this week, I mean. What's today, Tuesday? You already said that. So within the last few days. I, re- I recall perhaps six months ago seeing quite an impressive video of your daughter being thrown in the air and nearly trampled yeah. by one of these horses. She, she was, and she's been back on it. You know? Yeah, it took her a while to get over Did that. Did it? Yeah. I mean, that was that. I was not here. It scared me. Like, yeah. I mean, I was videoing <laughs> Oh, you were. I was. I was recording. I thought it was on the security. Camera. Well, no, it, we, there, there's both. Yeah. You have both, but I was video. I was recording from the balcony up here, and I saw it happening. And then, as I saw it start to escalate the wrong way, like I started running down there just in case. And yeah, so that, oh, so it like as it like it wasn't just a quick thing it was well i mean it was pretty quick but you could kind of see it starting to happen. getting riled up rambunctious yeah. and then when you could see it you know raul was here and who which is juventino's brother juventino is really the horse guy that that we're using and uh his brother was here who has less experience but he was kind of helping that day and he was having i could see him having trouble controlling the horse and I could see his eyes, like, you know, like, you know, trying to and like trying to stay calm, but like, yeah. realizing it was getting out of hand a little bit. Yeah. Bell was on, like, trying to stay calm, but I could see her starting to slide. So then, once I started seeing her sh- starting to slide, and the horse, he was not able to settle the horse. Then that's where I was like, okay, it's time to go down. That's when you want to like, you wish you could sprout wings real quick. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I contemplate, is it faster to jump <laughs> <laughs> and roll? <laughs> Seeing your kids in that kind of danger is not fun. I, you know, I'm, I'm on, I do I like my morning routine on my roof every yeah. day and the kids like to come up there with me and like screw around. Mm-hmm. And Joe, Joe the, the younger one who's three now is like kind of old enough that I don't really have to worry about him anymore, but there's like you know, 15 foot drops onto yeah. tile. And when he was a little younger, it was, it was a harrowing experience. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's an interesting dichotomy when you're doing like energy work or breath work or yoga or something. And you're like, you're, you know, you're trying to be spiritual and breathe. Right. And then your son is like, you know, next to the ledge. Right. Throwing fruit at you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, literally, like, climbing on me. There was a climbing on me stage that lasted for a while. Yeah. Those are fun times, though, man. Enjoy yeah. them. They don't last. I, no, gosh. It's so interesting, like, the difference. You know, my, my younger son, who's three, he still has that, like, young kid pudge a little bit. Yeah. His skin's still soft. Yeah. And he's a little bit, like just soft in general his body but like my five-year-old not at all right. he's got you know he's got older kid mm-hmm. regular yeah they felt my fast my five-year-old like put my three-year-old to bed last night you know oh. pretty cute yeah, in his great. dinosaur pajamas nice so Do, are dinosaurs real jesse i don't think so personally no okay i go with i'm i have no idea of course at all but I go with the theory that they were dragons. Dragons. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of evidence for for dragons. Yeah. I mean, right. There is a lot of evidence. in literature for sure. Right. Yeah. You know, it's uh. So yeah, I was having lunch with Jared and and it's it's kind of the theme of the day for me, right? I was <laughs> I was I interviewed <laughs> I interviewed Berlin 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 <laughs> from Dumplings and Noodles. Um, which, by the way, I will never truly be able to roll my r's properly i've accepted that 11 years in where was the r in i think her last name was like torres or something well, that was pretty good actually but yeah. um yeah well, i thought i was missing something or there something. was an r in Boleyn and no no she was telling me her last name and i butchered i butchered the torres. r's yeah, yeah, yeah. right but um but yeah i was interviewing Berlin, who's the owner of dumplings and noodles mm-hmm. which is one of the best restaurants in town actually we'll have the lunch with the team with abundant living that 
at Dumplings and Noodles that should be out, I think, this Thursday. So, oh, so a couple days before this pod three days. Come. Yeah, and the interview will be published Sunday, so right. it'll be a four-day. So by the time you guys are seeing this, we'll have already released the lunch video with Abundant Living at Dumplings and Noodles, so check that out. We'll link that below. And then we're interviewing the owner, Blin, Jesse already did. That'll come out the, the day after you're seeing this on Sunday. So, so yeah, so like, the you know, kind of the... And it's interesting too. I mean, it's actually let me sidetrack for a second. So, the the last two interviews I did, Daniel, which is already released, and Berlin, Berlin, which will be Sunday, um, they're both like kind of travelers who have mm-hmm. settled in Vilcabamba. Cool. And they they both have been to an extraordinary, well, particularly Berlin, an extraordinary amount of countries. But what really struck me that was super interesting is. They're both people that seem to just, they both have this really good vibe and they just both allow their life to unfold. Like they don't really put parameters and long-term plans and they just, the way they talk, they're like, and then this happened and then I did that and then this Mm -hmm. happened and so I did that. And if you listen, you know, both of their stories, which I didn't know either of them well, like prior to the interviews, like I know both of them, but not well. Um, Both of their stories, like the commonality is that all of these amazing things happen in their life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, as I was listening to both of them, I was like, man, just like trusting in God, trusting in the universe, letting things flow, and just allowing the unfoldment as opposed to like controlling and putting all the parameters on it. Special. Works. And it was like looking at them, I was like, oh man, like something I really... Like, I work on that. Yeah. It seems to just come naturally to them. Sure. But it's like, it's the way to go. Yeah, well, it's rare. It's special. It's, you know, it's hard for people. It's it's a way to go, but it's not easy. Right. You know, so when you meet people like that, that they really have mastered that or really, I mean, it's really working on themselves to be able to accept, you know, living that way. And those are special people, man. They're few yeah. and far between. You don't meet a lot of people that can really roll like that in so when you do, they often have stories that, you yeah. know, obviously I haven't heard her Bolin story. Well, if you it. watched, the, you know, any of our content. Yeah. I mean. Some of the interviews are pretty good. No, I believe you. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I know some of the folks. You know, I've never met Dan Daniels. Name. Daniel, yeah. Um, I've, I've not met him, but. If I, I interview you, will you watch it? Why, why would I? Why? If I would watch anything, why would I watch an interview of myself? Let me say this. Answer that. Question. Uh. It's a good point. Let, okay. let me let me <laughs> let me say this. Okay. If anybody would like to see Brandon and his family, oh my god, and his family, we could even get the kids in there. Maybe Quinn could only have the mic part of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but if, anybody, if anybody wants to see Brandon and his family tell their story, life moving to Ecuador. Let, put it in the comments. I mean, can we haven't we done that over the year, you know, and a half? We've got to let the people speak. We got to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was in, so I was interviewing Belen, Belen, and um, you know, one of the things she said too that was interesting uh, was she said, and she's like a very she's she's Ecuadorian mm-hmm. and she's she's from Guayaquil. She's from Guayaquil, but she's not. You know, she's as atypical as of. Ecuadorian as I've ever met like she's very unique in her mindset and her thinking in the, her spirit and her energy and her the whole nine right mm-hmm. and it was kind of interesting because her mom's side of the family is actually Lebanese okay um so yeah but but you know she said as a joke like I'm the black sheep of the family Lillian is the b- black sheep yeah and I don't think she means it so much as like necessarily she has this stain and her family doesn't think of her well I think she just means it as more as like she's different, different she right. stands out yeah. and you know one of the things that i like i think that's another commonality of the people that live in tokabamba well hands down man right <laughs> yeah i mean i'd be the black sheep as would i yeah and most people we know would likely be the black sheep of their families and part of it i mean part of it is that it is such a small town mm-hmm. it's such a small area and most people don't know anything about where we, you know, where we live. So if you do end up here, you know, it takes, it's not easy to find out about Bill Cabamba. It's not easy to find out Flopsy. It's not easy to find out about Bill Cabamba. It's not easy to find out what life is like here or why would, you know, why you would even be drawn to, 
to living in a place like this. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's all over the map, all over the internet, and it's just this place that everybody's dying to visit and check off their bucket list. Most people don't even know where it is on a map. Most people don't even, know, you know, even if they do know anything about Ecuador, they don't know anything about Vilcabamba. They know Galapagos. That's probably most people. So yeah. when, when you filter down to the people that actually leave a country they've been, either they're from, or like in Berlin's case, travel around a bunch of places and ended up settling in a place that she wasn't even born. You know, she was born way north of here. What, 10, 12 hours? Is that is that from here? Well, yeah, not north, mostly. Or west. Mostly west. Yeah. Sure. Um, but it's, it's... Seven hours. Seven hours, sure. So it's, you know, those people that do that, that are here, often aren't, you know, they're not... It's atypical, yeah. right, in general. So that it's, it is a common thread you see here. And for me, some of those... The, that's what makes this place awesome is because those folks are so interesting, right? And then when you have special folks that have, you know, unique perspectives or have traveled other places and or have or here on a passion project, man, that's beautiful. And those are those are special folks. Yeah, the. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's very much a community of unique individuals, Yeah, like the people that have made their home here are all unique like they're not this you're not gonna i don't know that there would be like a, a cookie cutter person that's from another place that lives in this area no um you know and if yeah i mean obviously it depends on your definition but at least not the foreign community the, yeah that's the, from somewhere the local there. community you know ecuadorian community that that has second homes here or lives here from Roja. Right, right. there's i mean there's kind of a type yeah. Um, for those folks, but the international community, right, there's there's really not a cookie cutter. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a town of, like, free-spirited, independent thinkers mm-hmm. who, you know, are relatively sort of individualistic yeah. and have, you know, kind of made their, made their own way and have lived interesting lives mm-hmm. and in many cases um, are doing really interesting things. Yeah. And have mastered critical thought. Yeah, you know, like almost in most cases. In a lot of, well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. They could have, they could come up with conclusions that you know you and I may disagree with, but sure. their points are going to be well thought out. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they're going to be well thought out, and it's most likely it's not going to be what you know Dr. Seuss said or you know CNN said or. Oh. I have no idea why. <laughs> oh, I mean, you my head went green eggs and ham. Like <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so I was, you know, I was chatting, I was chatting with, well, it's, it kind of ties back to Berlin, too, like, you know, so I asked her at one point, um, what were the things that kept her here? Yeah. And, you know, she named kind of some stuff that, um, you know, she mentioned the safety of the town, you know, security, that she can walk around and not worry about her safety, and she mentioned the weather and, mm-hmm. you know, a few things like that, but then she kind of got to her punchline, which was, which was nature right. for her. Um, and then I'm, you know, I'm chatting with, uh, I'm chatting, I'm chatting with Jared and just, you know, he's a guy, we've talked about this before, but if, you know, if people don't remember that background or haven't seen it, you know, he's an ex-military, he's dealt with a lot of stuff in his life. He's, you know, he's, he's like a guy that needs to unwind Mm -hmm. and, um, also like has some serious fortitude, right? The, the getting here in the way that oh, yeah. he did and all that. Interesting guy. Um, you know, I like I like him quite a bit. He's a really cool guy. And uh, talking to him a little bit, and he's just telling me about how different he feels not eating the same crap that he ate back home and what that's doing for him. Sure. And the fact that, you know, where he rented... He said he's you know he's got an orange tree outside with five hundred oranges on it and he start he went to Loha and bought a juicer right, you know right. and he started awesome. juicing and and he was like he was telling me he's like I saw Monica who's you know works works he's a, one of our admins he's like I saw Monica in the park and and she kicked her shoes off and put her feet in the grass and he's like he's like I haven't done that since I was you know playing baseball as a kid. And he's like, and she was telling him like, and she's local, you know, she's from here. She was telling him, you know, like, it's good for you. And then he was kind of doing that. He's like waking up to those things and the river and the nature and all. And it's like, it's just really, 
it's it's awesome. cool to see yeah and that's the cool thing that's i mean be, because we have the climate year round that's generally the same you can incorporate those into daily habits like right you can go out and ground and lay in the grass and stand in the grass almost every day if not multiple times a day all year round where and there's a lot of places you know where i was from in in the midwest you couldn't do that half the year half the year it was either too cold or snowy or you know rainy or yeah so you can incorporate so it was hard to you know that said it's hard to to create a personal habit a daily habit and then if you don't do it for half the year it's hard to all of a sudden just start doing it so it's really it's more difficult to incorporate that but here you can do it every day you can just wake up and start the day go stand in the grass put your feet in the grass and you know breathe the fresh air it's I mean, it sounds so cheesy that I'm saying that out loud, but it's all, you know, it's awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's those things that, you know, you don't know, you know, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you don't know. You don't. Right. And now it's not that I take them for granted, but now I just expect and appreciate that about this place. That's what if people are looking for that. It's a great place to, to be able to establish new habits and see how that changes, how you feel. What your perspective is, what you know, how your mind works, it's powerful. Yeah, I mean the the gratitude I feel for yeah. that stuff, like just waking up in the morning and the sun comes over the mountains. Yeah. You know, about for me about an hour and a half later because I get up early, but right. you know the sun comes over the mountains and and I go up on my roof normally sometime after that, and I'm my shirt's off and I'm in the sun mm -hmm. and I'm watching the angles and the way the mountain looks at different times of year. And sometimes you get a little clouds or fog kind of in the mountains. I mean, just that alone right. is like, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same here. Like we have this great view of Mondango and then even the sun, the angle of the sun, the, where it, where it, it changes as it crosses the horizon and it casts different shadows and yeah. the mountain looks different and you see different crevices yeah. And it sounds silly, but I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. Like I, I even thought I have this when I was doing hydroponics and aeroponics back in the states indoor. Um, in the winters, I bought this this uh, uh, time lapse camera, which you can do on iPhones now. But this uh -huh. was this was like a, a high def, you know, time lapse camera for you know for that purpose, so I could like time lapse growth stage, you know, phases, how long it would take from seed to harvest, blah blah blah. But I was just thinking, I was sitting there today and I'm looking, I'm like, I'm going to set that up. I'm going to oh, bring it great. and just do it here. Cause then I, I looked at the, I got the idea cause I, somebody made a com, put a comment on uh, the last pod where a couple pods ago and we did it as the sun was setting and I, and they put like a timestamp of an, uh, and I went back and looked and as I was scanning the timestamp, I, it was like a time lapse as yes. you go through, yeah. I'm like, Whoa, that yeah. looks awesome. So I'm thinking I'm going to bring the camera. When we go back, I'm going to bring the camera back and start doing like a daily time lapse that could just show like, it, and it, you could see how different it is. And instead of having to watch it all day, you can see it in, you know, like a two minute video and see the change and how it's different. No, that would, I, re I really do hope you do that. The, um, you know, who's doing something a little bit like that on his uh, Facebook stories. And I need to, I told him like, I got to get this footage from you, which he said he was happy to give us, but. That guy Michael, um, from Stockton, California. Oh yeah, Mike. No, he's awesome. Yeah, he's really cool. Yeah. Um, and you know he's uh, he's he's been posting on his stories, and it's like you see the clouds, like because it's in fast forward right. or whatever. You see the cloud. It's time lapse. You see the like billowing clouds. Yeah. You know, it's really amazing. Dude, so do that on do that on that last podcast. You can just drag. No, I the did. Thing, I did. And you could it's see so the same cool. thing, yeah. and the clouds roll, and the sun come. Yeah. No, and and you know Michael Michael who's been here for um, a few weeks at least, and I think he said he had two or three months in total yeah. before he goes back and comes back. But mm -hmm. um, he was just coming to you know see verify that this place was what he was looking for. You know, he's trying to fix all his physical stuff with Dr. Ashraf mm -hmm. just while he's here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's freaking awesome. No, he's awesome. He even went, he went to, uh, he met a guy that's doing uh, MMA training. He trained some MMA fighters and went to a, a local MMA fight in Loja on oh, yeah. Friday. And Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I was, Izzy and Danny went too, I think, yeah, were planning yeah. to go. And, yeah, Izzy actually invited me to go to that this weekend, a different one, I guess, this weekend. But I have to fly to Quito and get Kirsten. 
Oh, she's coming home. She's coming home on Saturday, so I can't go. I mean, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm. It takes a lot to get me out and do things, things like that. So I don't know if that was a good out for me or not. But I was very mixed about. It. I like, you know me. Like I don't yeah. like to do a lot of things like that. Yeah. Like I actually kind of wanted. No, I was be cool. I was pretty much yeah. thinking I was gonna go. Yeah, it would be cool um, to go. Yeah, yeah, I'd go. I'd go check it out. Why? Just one weekend. You know, yeah, just go see what it's like. Yeah, I've seen a lot we, of we were gonna like before. walk out apparently with like his boy oh, who's fighting. Is he's got a boy this fight? Apparently, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> All right. yeah, you would probably enjoy something like. That. I mean, my brother did that for years back, yeah. and so he did a lot of local shows in Chicago, and and you know, I'd bring my boys, and we get you know <laughs> okay. ringside tables, yeah, and so you've uh, done it. yeah, it was, it's a blast. Yeah, the um, yeah, the you know the as I've you know I, I I've gotten like more and more sensitive to energy yeah and um and uh <laughs> Jack, jesse's got pms now <laughs> how would you how, what would we say it's not it's like pre pre energy syndrome <laughs> what can we say pes yeah, that yeah. works that yeah. works and so it's like yeah it's like right like i don't know since <laughs> energy overwhelm syndrome no, it's <laughs> like no yeah like hyper energy syndrome <laughs> right <something laughs> like that. I think they give Adderall for that, right? Yeah, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> so, you know, I've gotten more and more sensitive to energy, and it's sort of like, you know, I take my cues from the way things feel energetically, right? So it's like if, you know, I, I can kind of, like, catch someone's vibe or the vibe of a thing or whatever, like, from pretty good distance, and, like, I already know prior to anything happening whether something's a yes for me or a no for me or these kinds of things, right? And, you know, I was, I, I got, a, I had, I had missed the Saturday market like two weeks in a row mm -hmm. where um, my, my day had gone because for me, it's like a trade off in the morning between getting, getting my, Saturday <laughs> getting morning. my full um, morning routine <laughs> in uh, or hitting the Saturday market. Yeah. And then usually it's hard for me to get to the morning routine after because it's like the day's going at that point and the mm -hmm. kids want to do stuff and whatever. So, but this last Saturday, but it's like a, it's like a regret for me. It's like, if I don't get to do it, um, I'm, I'm Saturday Mark. Yeah. I like, so I, I got a chance to go this last Saturday and I was just, and this has happened to me lots of times at the Saturday market where I like paused and just appreciated it the way I do. But it's the, you know, you, and let me kind of just set the scene for people. Right. So it's, it's an organic market, mm -hmm. um, local producers, uh, I think, all of the producers, I believe, are are locals are from here. Um, there might there's like a couple of foreigners that might have stands selling other stuff, but not mm -hmm. food, um, like some artisans or whatever. But you know, so it's this it's this local organic market where literally Saturday morning, the the local producers of the organic produce and fruits and so forth are harvesting like that morning or the night before at the most, and then. Everything's sort of laid out in usually in containers with maybe a little water or whatever. Just, you know, so it's just this sort of and there's stands, all these little stands. So it's just sort of a a, 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 a plethora or a smorgasbord or whatever of just produce, organic produce. Organic yeah, it's like a farmer's fruits. market. The farmer's yeah. market. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And um, and so and it's like usually you've got some folks playing live music mm -hmm. there's like a microphone you know so you'll have like you know there's some sort of like you know happy generally mm -hmm. music going on you've got kids running around so i always take my kids it's like almost free babysitting um and you've got like a bunch of kids mm -hmm. everybody is super relaxed it becomes like a social event totally so you know you if you're in a rush to get in and out, like you're better off just not going because you know it's such a small town, you know everybody, so you end up in conversations like the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, sur but if you surrender to that, you know if you just okay, like I love it because I can. My kids, my kids could spend two three hours there like very happily yeah. climbing trees, climbing and trees, and doing all that stuff. And there's a juice bar, and they get juice, and you know you can get the bee pollen from the lady that just brought it off the mountain. And you can get all the artisanal products and the honey and the different cures for all kinds of stuff. And I mean, when I was there a few weeks ago, you know, I'm, uh, a, 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 an, an indigenous guy in a in like some traditional clothes 
you know, and some markings and like sh shirtless is walking around and he strikes up a conversation with me and I find out about him and where he's from and what he's doing and he's doing all, you know, this is like, it's a place you can have a lot of interesting interactions, but I'm, you know, I'm so I'm like, I'm like doing the, the market and, and I'm just, every time I go to the market, the energy of it, like just how good the vibe is, stays with me. It like, for, it's like sets up my day. It's like, and it's like, that's the kind of things for me about this place. And it doesn't mean that every aspect of Vilcabamba has that high energy. Right. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's all kinds here, but you know, and there's, there's all kinds here and there's every walk of life and every belief system and all that. But, but between the nature and the rivers and all that stuff and the type of people that do live here some of the incredible people, the, the healers in particular, right? Like yeah. these these amazing healers that just exude just light and love and just mm -hmm. happiness, right? Mm -hmm. um, and world renowned. Some of them, I mean, are known all over the world, man. These aren't yeah. just like you know, and there's tons backyard of health practitioners. Yeah. You know, they're like people that but they're in our backyard. All, they are, <laughs> they are, and that is pretty awesome. Yeah. So yeah, just I, I just you know, it's like. These are just the kinds of things that that are like readily available here, right. right? It's not these are not unique experiences if you want to have them. Now again, it's all about like where you're at. And mm -hmm. that's why I think, you know, we always go back to this place not being for everybody and we try to I think on this pod part of what we try to do is just give some like nuance to some of this right. so people can feel it like is this some is this what I'm looking for or is these people nuts? <laughs> like right, right. right? cuz they're you might really feel one way or the other. Sure. Um but uh, there's something I was going to say about that. Yeah, I mean, it's really, I I say this all the time, but I believe this. It's that I I don't think this place is for most people. No. Like most people are going to not enjoy, you know, the lifestyle here. And for many different reasons, but it, you know, a lot of it is, is just the programming they've come from or the, you know, the self-work they need to do to, to kind of unwind or to deprogram or decouple, or I, I don't even know how to describe it, but just to, to accept, you know, the vibe here and want to be part of that. It's, I mean, it's, it's not a lot of people, to be honest, you know, it's not, it's not most people. Yeah. So it's not just some people. I think it's really most people, nine out of 10 people you yeah. know, are going to be like Bill Kamamba you know, crazy hippies, right, crazy, right. you know, about, you know, and, and I say that not disparagingly because I was kind of one of those people in a way, like there was a shred of me, a part of me that was like some of these, some of these, you know, healing modalities that I'd never heard of. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, kind of the way I thought about a chiropractor and some people think chiro chiropractors are quacks. And I, I was one of those people until I actually had an issue that I couldn't get well treated by the traditional medicine in the United States. And I saw a chiropractor the first time in my life, disparagingly, almost cursing under my breath while I was there. And he helped me, you know, Dr. Saltis, if you're watching, <laughs> you know, like you made a difference in my life. You changed my life dramatically. Right. So, so that kind of was my first, you know, pathway into, you know, some alternative thinking about health, mm -hmm. but that still, even though, you know, I was open. I told myself I was open to other things. There was still in the back of my head, like, oh, this is quackery or this is bullshit or whatever. And then you come here and then you experience or I've experienced some of these these healing modalities that I didn't know even existed that are common for people here knowing about, but not where I'm from. And having that experience, that changes it. So that all you need is that for me... That's all I needed was a few of those experiences, and then you're like, "Wow, right. okay, right. this is real." Like, I, some I don't care what anyone else says anymore. I don't care who says it's quackery. I don't. It doesn't. You know, I'm done. It, it doesn't matter. And I know that it made a difference for me. It's improved. You know, like Dr. Tesh and Dr. Bruno, they've made yeah. amazing, amazing improvements on me. So, in in very limited time and very. Um, on it, you know, not intrusive right. methods that I think, you know, seem wild that I don't even <laughs> want to describe because it sounds so crazy, 
but they, they worked. <laughs> yeah, I know? mean, it's like the thing that opened my mind to these things, because I also, you know, I mean, I, I rejected anything that I deemed as hippie yeah. starting as a young child right. through my 20s, like vehemently, like despised it. Like anything that was outside of the matrix, basically, yeah. for me was was something I detested, and anything that was even remotely non physical or outside of the provable realms for me was like, you know, get the f out of here, right? right. Um, what opened my mind to that, and then you know, it's like once that dam breaks, then and you're open to it, then it's like you can really have some fun because you can. You know what opened was when I was when I ex- learned and accepted, because it's, in my opinion, proven that this is all just frequency. That none of this is it's actually energy. real. It's yeah. all just frequency. It's all just energy. It's all just frequency. Yeah. So once like once I really accepted that, it's like, that allowed my mind to go like, oh wait, all this stuff makes sense in that paradigm. Mm-hmm. It's not. You know, it's the, the paradigm of, like, you have this physical body, and this is what we do, and this is how these things happen, and it's all sort of, like, mechanical, you know, it goes, for me, went away, and then it was, that opened up, like, oh, you know, this is all malleable. Yeah, and there's, I mean, and it's not, like, there is no science to it. There is. There is right. documented, there are studies, that, I have plenty of books on the electric universe. Yeah. There's, on on electricity the electric body and human optimization like it's I mean, studies the, have been done they've you know we have the government have. admits things like remote viewing like the cia you, did yeah. admit that's real yeah which is wild yeah like that's a wild one right well it, yeah well it, it sort of proves the holographic reality right perspective simulation yeah simulate and i have a body my body nick uh He's a kid I uh, grew up in in Berlin with, you know, one of my oldest friends, and we have a, a text chain with with him and my buddy Andy, who is who is a very liberal, progressive, vegan, conservative, you know, mm-hmm. he he actually or con, uh, environmental mm-hmm. conservationist, mm-hmm. not conservative, mm-hmm. um, and he lives it, man. He lives it. He lives this stuff. He I respect the fact that he is so convicted. And he lives it. He rides his bike in Chicago in the winters. You know, he doesn't own, you know, he rents because he doesn't want to own, you know, like he, you know, he brings jars to, to local organic food markets to reuse. So he doesn't use packaging. Mm-hmm. Like he lives it. Um, and uh, we have this text chain because my buddy Nick, he's, he's more conservative. He's, you know, he's not a vegan. He's more, um, you know, in, you know, I don't know what the re- what the word is, but he's more like self, you know, accountable for his actions, even though, you know, the two of them go at it often, you know, one saying the other one's unaccountable, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> so, so we're on this, on this, on this text chain and we have some fun with each other. We've known each other our whole lives, you know, kindergarten. 65 years? <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> oh, you've been waiting. How long do you take to... To come up with that one, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you said that. It's a good one. Uh, Sixty-five years, yeah. So we've known each other, you know, a long time, and you know, he he messaged, you know, messaged today. Well, two things actually. Ironically, he sent me a video of him walking in the grass nice. on the chain, like Wait, sorry, getting the, grounded. The liberal or the no, conservative? The conservative. Okay. Conservative guy. Uh, he's walking in the grass, grounded. You know, because my buddy, you know, it's funny, they'll send, you know, somebody will send a video about Biden yeah. stumbling on words, and then Andy will send a video about Trump using the wrong words, and, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and Andy sent one of those today, and Nick responded, not today, and he's videoed himself walking <laughs> in the grass, <laughs> grounded, and then he, and he said something about, like, you know, later to me on the side, like, I'm just convinced now that this is all a simulation. (laughs) Yeah. So, Nick, right on, baby. Andy, come along, baby. Come along. You'll get there, buddy. I believe in you. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, I like what's been cool for me, painful, 
like hard fought lessons, you know, but what's been cool for me to come to understand is, you know, well, the basic stuff like the mind body connection and sort of how it, it is, it is a holographic reality. And so whatever level, you know, that whole as above, so below principle, like whatever level you're working on, you're working on that same thing is happening on all the other levels as well. So whether that's in your consciousness or in your mind or in your body, like those are the same. <laughs> so like a version, like, like a version of that, right? Yeah. Like, well, it's like, like it's like, it, it's like if you, space. it's like if you get traumatized in your mind, yeah. your body stores it. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's like if you resolve, so all of a sudden you have a physical ailment, that's not because you fell down, you know, it's because... Well, you can. But no, no, sure. I'm yeah. just saying in this example. Right. You could have, you know, you have a physical ailment that's the result of something in your mind that right. happened. Mm -hmm. And if you resolve it either in the mind or in the body, it it's both places are going to, by definition, resolve. Sure. At this, like, they have to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really, like, it's been really, there's a, there's a book, a very famous book called, I think, things called like the body keeps score uh, okay. that I read when I was kind of in the depths of my, of the health issues that I had. And, yeah. um, it's really fascinating. Like she had sort of, she had documented like just exactly how that works mm -hmm. and like what, what each health and other people have done this too, but what each sort of, um, and this might've even been a different book I was reading. I don't know. I might be mixing them up, but what, um, what, like malady is a result from what trauma or like what thing took place. So it's like if, you know, you, uh, I think, I think German new medicine is kind of based on this too, but it's like, you know, it's like, for example, the German new medicine guy, you know, of like a thousand brain, brain scans or a thousand, whatever, you know, of somebody who has a liver thing or a kidney thing, they all had the exact same childhood event. Mm. All of them. Interesting. So it's like if you know if you have like liver cancer, he knows for certain that this took place to you in your life. Sure. Um, this is some of the stuff that people are going to think is crazy. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But what's what what has like what I've come into through personal experience is like you actually can heal all that stuff yourself mm -hmm. like not that you don't need help or something like sure. you, obviously that's great to have help i just mean you know you can heal a knee or an or a digestion issue or anything else mm -hmm. you know maybe you're someone who gets migraines or you get whatever you can heal all of that stuff not through pills right. not through you know uh surgery or whatever you know you can actually heal it through and of course not that the physical stuff has no effect i'm not making that argument mm -hmm. but you know but the whole that whole connection and the way all that works you can get your body and mind and everything else working properly yeah. it's not easy right but it can be done like. yeah. and some of the beauty of that once you come to that realization and accept that then you can work on some of those things that have happened in the past but then going forward to to know that that for you to bother me, I have to give you consent. It's true. You know, like, it's true. I have to give you my consent to get bothered by somebody, right? That's, that's pretty powerful, man. So like, powerful. So, and, and that's the hard part. Like, understanding that's the easy part. Like, really putting that into practice is the part, the hard part. And that's the part, you know, that, you know, we're 65-year-old men that are just, you know, kind of discovering this. And for me, we some of We look good for our age. We do. For, I mean, 65, man, come on. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> <laughs> but some, some of the beauty of that for me right now is not, you know, not what it can do for, for me and you or our wives or... But but our kids like being able yeah. to help, be able to explain some of these concepts to our children. Like I'm able to have conversations with Bella to kind of illustrate how powerful her mind actually is. Yeah. Like that's awesome because we didn't nobody talked to us about that stuff when we were kids. Yeah. So so, you know, the fact that we're able to help them, you know, understand that and it, it be exposed to that and 
and really start practicing that at their age, like they're going to be way beyond us, you know, at 65, <laughs> you know, to, you, mean you when know, they're your age. right, right. What are you? 63, <laughs> 61. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really a good point. Yeah. But that's, it's just a powerful, powerful piece. Like this, the past, obviously you have to actively go back and, you know, heal that trauma, but the future trauma is a choice. The future trauma is really, you're going to give yeah. consent yeah. or you're not traumatized. Yeah. I mean, it's my goal on is to be untriggerable. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I Which, work. I'm I, not there yet. Yeah. I uh, can get you. Well, lots of people can get yeah. me like, I'm not there yet, but yeah, but it's, you know, I, I don't want to go too far down this path, although it's a fun topic, but, um, I will at some point when I start to interview some of the, when we get the studio set up yeah. and I can start to do some deep dives. Um, I love this kind of stuff, but yeah, it's cool. But um, yeah, the, you know, the just kind of the, for me, the last point on this, like the, and it's, and of course it speaks directly to us creating our own reality completely. Like it literally, to me, it almost proves that, but, um, but the, you know, the, the perspective, as, as you like to say, the story you tell yourself, you know, but the perspective, like what you, what you judge about it, like what you tell yourself about the thing that's happening is what creates what is happening. It's literally what creates how you feel about right. what's happening, which means what's happening. Right. Because, you know, you could interpret anything you want in any way you want and it takes a long time to even have the realization that you have a choice, right? It takes oh, yeah. like a really long time to even be able to realize like, wait, I could take this thing personally or not. Right. I could think that someone is doing something to me or not. Mm -hmm. Like I can get upset about this or not because we, you know, we, because of our wounds, which then turn into triggers, we tell ourselves we tell ourselves a story as to why this thing that's taking place is so unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And then we get upset about right. it. And, you know, like, yeah, as, as you said in the beginning, which I think is a really powerful point, like to, to be able to take control of that and to decide what you make of something and to be able to like clarify and, and understand that, things are not personal that no one's doing anything to you and like to you know the amount of power and control over your life that that can give back to you is remarkable right well that's really what it is like you're keeping the you know you, you're you're maintaining the power you have yeah you're keeping the power and that's you know that's you know to, to teach children that that's that's powerful man because then that has ripple effect effects people want to you know, change society and, you know, it starts in your own house, like make your own bed. I think Jordan Peterson is make your own bed. And, um, but starting with yourself and your, and your family and making those changes. I mean, there's a lot of, th I mean, it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Ow. I'm hoping he can make a change. That but it's be, real, that dude. my favorite Michael Jackson Dude, it's song. great. And, and, and that concept is threaded through throughout history. Marcus Aurelius, that's his, one of his most famous quotes, right? Yeah. If you are pained by external things, it's not they that disturb you, but your judgment of them, right? Correct. What story did you tell yourself, right? Like we've, we're getting all this. The universe has got all these clues and quotes and geniuses and lords and whatever that have mm -hmm. left it for us to either seek and find or ignore mm -hmm. you know so it's it's all there and so to to, ha to to know that and be able to have the power to take action on that's awesome yeah and i think you know i think like you know what's what's maybe interesting about this conversation for people who are thinking about ecuador or thinking about vilcabamba you have a lot of people here who are seeking those kinds of that kind of evolution, that kind of self development, like are on that path to some degree, to whatever degree, to one degree or another. And you have a concentration of folks who 
have mastered that to whatever degree they have mm-hmm. and are here to teach, like are here to mm-hmm. share their wisdom, their lessons. Um, so it's a place like if you're, if you're really like serious about healing, about facing yourself, about evolving, about overcoming the mind, overcoming whatever. Right. It's very conducive to that. Yeah. Like it's very, very conducive. Establishing or reconnecting you know, a relationship with your spiritual side, spirituality, with nature, whatever Mm -hmm. that is, like it's it's extremely conducive. And I think a lot of it is, is the, what you nailed with the self-development piece, right? It's, it's really a lot, it's really a container for that. You can, you can do that here if you want to easier than most places I've ever been to. And you can help other people do that. Like, again, I, I keep bringing up the kids that I just thought of another Another scenario this this weekend, you know, we went to we went to Zizomora for the for the finals. Quinn had the the finals uh, for his IDV soccer team, and uh, the team they played before this team they played before and in an indoor tournament, and they you could see it was pouring rain. First of all, I mean it was literally pouring the whole game. <laughs> like the kid Eker got sick. Like yeah. it, they probably shouldn't have played actually, but anyway. They played the game. Man, you're getting soft in your old and, age. And uh, <laughs> I mean, 65 years of experience will do that to you. Um, but they, you know, they, they played this team before. And in this game, they had a different game plan. Like, they literally. The other like, team? The other team was, like, double teaming Quinn and, like, being rough and phys- super physical. And, and I've got a couple of clips. And, they're, and the ref was literally calling they were literally Quinn's dribbling the ball through guys and their bodies their body knocking him off the ball like this shoving him off two guys and then Quinn throws his hands up like what the hell you know what's going on he's like looking at me like dad what's going on they're not calling fouls so then he's like all right I'm not gonna like I'm gonna get so then he's running in there and he's you know like body and then every single time you touch him Foul, foul. Wow. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, he's hometown refs. Huh? I'm like, what? This is this is not right. And he was getting, he was, you know, and they ended up losing two to one on oh. an own goal. Their their oh. defender, the defender headed the ball into their own goal. It was anyway. It was it, it was a good lesson. But the, the the reason I bring this up is because he was a little, he was a little, you know, he was, you know, discouraged after he was upset. He couldn't understand why. Yeah. You know, why the refs are supposed to call it fair. He's like, Dad, what was happening? You know, they were, like, literally pulling my jersey, pulling me off the ball, both sides. And then I was barely touching them, and they were calling the foul on me. And I'm like, I know, listen, the whole the whole crowd, was we were sitting with the IDB, they were all yelling and yelling at the refs. We all saw it. And, but I'm like, so I told them, I'm like, listen, man, you know, from my perspective, it, it really wasn't called fair. But at the end of the day, that's out of your control, right? right. So... There's nothing you can do. So all, all we can do is we can focus on, all right, well, what can you do better? Were there a couple different times where you could have done something differently on the field or you could be better than you were? And you just focus on being better than you were yesterday. And that's it, man. If you do that, all the rest of this stuff will work out. You know, don't you can't control the refs. You can't control what they call. You just have to foot. And he's like, Okay, I'm like, and he's, you know, he just turned eight. So part of this is probably like, I'm thinking is going over his head. And it's a long day going to Zamora. But, you know, I I have this talk with him to kind of like pep him back up. Good lesson, you know. Um, And then we get home. I'm exhausted. I'm like ready to crash. He comes into into the living room up here, moves the ottoman, and starts doing ball control drills (laughs) off the couch. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? He's like, I got to be better, Dad. I got to be better than I was. I got to be better than I was today. Oh, my God, dude. But it's just like, oh, man, it was awesome. Like, yeah, he's awesome. so being able to teach kids that, our kids that now and stuff that I, you know, we didn't really think about that way at, at that age. I think it's it's powerful, you know. Yeah. Meanwhile, your daughter's riding horses behind us with your son. It is. Well, oh. not riding yet. Oh, getting they're getting ready. ready. To ride. Yeah, there's Sky right there. It's, we now own a horse. I never thought I would say I have a horse and a horse saddle. And that's like, you know, it's interesting too, right? Because one, one of the really cool things about life here in general is like everything's just 
Well, I'm going to say this, and actually you could take it the other way too on certain things, but like everything is just easier. There are, there are inconveniences. So like, I get, I guess like, yeah, if you're, if you're wanting like big city or you're wanting like city convenience and order, then everything's going to seem really hard here actually. But, but in general, like people just take it easy about everything and like life's really easy here. <laughs> and you know, the, I, I, I'm not intimately familiar, but I know a little bit like what it costs to own a horse in the States. Yeah. It's like a major undertaking. Yeah. Um, like very expensive. Like you have that real money, I think basically to own a horse yeah. back home. It's, and yeah. here, like, you, you know, I don't it's know not, what you paid yeah. for your horse. Maybe it's a nice breed or something, but like, but like you could buy, you can buy a horse for like three hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, if you want to spend money on one, you can, you right. could go up to maybe a couple of grand at the like, most for, for like, like the, a super nice, like pure fanciest, red, you know, you know Peruvian, Paso like, Fino, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's like it's like a few hundred bucks to buy a horse and, you know, to train them. And you're like, it's just like it's just like a guy from down the street that knows how it's like yeah. doing it for practically nothing. And then they're just eating grass and you don't need to build them a shelter if you no, don't want, you which don't. almost no one does because right. they just hang out outside. Yeah. It's just like, it's yeah, just, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. And it. You know, there are some conveniences. It's weird. So, you know, the guy that has the goats down here by the soccer field. <laughs> which so, is, time out. So, <laughs> so at the Coliseo, which is the <laughs> soccer stadium, there's a guy who almost all the time has, goat. has his goats there just eating grass. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, which was, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but just yesterday, which was a great, it was a great day, right? So I take my five-year-old to soccer practice he goes like occasionally <laughs> take my five-year-old to soccer practice and i go with my three-year-old and i'm laying in this beautiful bright sun on a towel while my son you know 20 feet away from practice while he practices and my other son screws around with a wiffle ball and whatever <laughs> and at one point there's this dog that's like yapping and yapping and i look over and one of the goats is <laughs> is laying down on the bleachers i mean the like they're not even bleachers. What do you call them? Like the yeah. seating. Yeah, it's bleachers. And the goat's laying down, and the goat's just chilling, laying down on the bleachers. And this dog is just like beside itself that this goat is here. Right. What are you doing? Yapping yeah. at the goat, and the goat's yeah. just in there, like chewing its cut. Like, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. yeah the While the kids play soccer. Yeah. Right? The goats actually got up through here, so they, you know, we quit. We walk in through. Yeah. Through the forest here, there, or through the forest, through the what is it? Over the river yeah, and through, through the woods. The like literally, we do that to take him to soccer practice and yeah. pick him up every day. But a couple times, the the goats have gotten through, and they're jumping over the fence, and they're jumping all over. And I'm like, so then we got a call. I forget his name. I shoot up. Uh, call him. Like, hey, goats are all up here. Um, anyway, so we became, you know, Bella's now talked to them and, and uh, you know, we've, we've befriended them. And uh, let, let me backtrack a little. So we got the, we got the, um, the saddle from, so we talked to Wilson, who, you know, we're, we're friends with, who does a lot of horse training and does horse retreats and all that stuff here, horse riding. Um, he hooked Bella up with a guy that, the hat, you know, the hat guy that brings the hats yeah. on the cart, yeah. he gets stuff from Peru and he, Wilson got a bunch of saddles from Peru mm. that Bella likes the particular, there's a different style, which yeah. I didn't know the different style. So he brings these things for Peru. So Wilson, you know, hooked, you know, hooked us up with this guy, the hat guy, and he's bringing stuff in Peru. So then he's, and he's bringing them to the house. To let us check them out and, nice. you know, and Wilson's like, okay, that's a good price. You know, like he was, you know, double. Yeah. so, so anyway, so, so we ended up getting this one saddle and then it was a couple of days ago, all of a sudden there's a knock at the door and it's, it's, it's the goat guy and the hat guy and they got a leather saddle pad and, you know, they're like, Hey, you know, this is for this type of saddle, this will make it more comfortable, you know, and, and, and Bell was like, well, I can't. You know, I don't have any money to pay for this now. And they're like, don't worry about it. You know, you can pay me later. We can work it out another time. But, like, they literally, like, if you have any questions. But they literally came to the house to do that, right? You know? And I'm like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, you're not getting, like, door to, you know, at your door service for that kind of stuff. And these guys are just scared. Because I think part of it is because she shows, like, a passion and is yeah. interested. And, and they're like liking the fact that oh she, he, she's asking questions she's respectful she's what do i think about this what are you know and then yeah. they're kind of reciprocating that and now we've got a saddle pad and a leather saddle and she's it's it's such a kind and human culture that like if you can get over yourself enough which is difficult yeah. but you can get over yourself enough 
to really like be that with here, like just be that here, just really kind and human. What opens up in that way is is the culture, the true culture here, mm -hmm. which is that. Like right. it's just it's very kind and human, and like people take care of each other and are wonderful to one another and have a lot of beautiful customs and you know, all that stuff. You know. Yeah, you could you know when we were we were in Zamora after the game, you know some of the parents. You know, they coordinated and got like some food, pizza, and some stuff for the for the kids after, and and so they're coming up into the bleachers, and you know, a couple of the moms had kind of organized that we brought some pastries from the baguette, and you know, those one of the buhos, the little owl yeah. pastry thingies, and so they play, created this, and they created each kid a plate, and they're giving it all out, and you know, then kids are kind of like finishing, and then parents, some people are leaving, people are hanging out, and then. You know, when, you know, we had finished and Quinn gave them the plate. They were collecting the, the plates and gave the plate and he said, you know, gracias. And then he gave, he, he went and gave the moms a hug. Mm -hmm. And I, I was watching when it was happening. And like none of the, I mean, maybe some of the other kids, I didn't see any of the other kids like give them a hug. But he, Quinn just gave them, went and gave them, said thanks and gave them a hug. And they like looked at each other like, they were just like, oh my God, you know, and it was just like, they were hugging. It was just, I don't know, it was just, it was a cool moment to see like that they appreciated that he did that. And I'm like, oh, and and then now it makes me feel good because now they're like, they have his back. Like when they were, yeah. when they saw the refs, they're like yelling at the refs and you can hear like on my videos, all these other people, it's not me yelling Quinn's name. Like you can hear me because I bellow like a, I don't even know what it sounds like, but it's it's yeah. pretty loud and uh <laughs> especially like if he does good then it's like the you know the dad roar comes <laughs> out you know um but you can hear all these other queen 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 you know and then i'm like oh they fucking love they love him <laughs> you know did i just say that yeah yeah, yeah. bleep yeah it's cool yeah. Did, um so did after the game was there like like what happened like like were people talking to the ref like what uh yeah i mean i so this is the, uh, so last week in the semifinals, this is the same ref that kicked our assistant coach out with a red card. Um, so I, I'm not sure, like, I don't, I, I don't know if like another red card now means he gets, if there's a penalty for the next, I don't know how the rules work for carryover of that. So they were kind of being a little more respectful, I think, but and not that they were disrespectful because the last time he, the ref missed a blatant handball that they yeah. scored a goal and they ended up winning the game and that's how they got the finals. But this ref, you know, they already had beef <laughs> right. with the ref to get kicked out of the game. So they were not yeah. doing that. But yeah, I mean, it was, sounds wild. It was pretty blatant, you know, blatant, you know, blatant. Uh, it almost, it almost, it almost felt like, it sounds silly, but almost like it was a little racist, you know. Like <laughs> he's the only white kid out there, and they're just. But it was. Just, it wasn't the whole team. Like it was him that was like. No, I mean they were physical in general. Um, but he was the he was clearly he the targeted by far. He was clearly targeted by multiple kids at the same time, and he was getting any time he like touched the things that weren't fouls, they were foul. They were. They were literally calling fouls on everything. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you a couple of clips. We could put them in here. You're going to see, like, he's literally getting shoved off the ball and then comes, he drive, dribbles through two or three kids, then they they collapse on him, shove him off the ball. He runs back to get the ball and kind of bumps into him, flag, you know, and it's just like, come on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, what are you going to do? You can Beat control, the crap out of the rest. Control the things you can control, right? <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got. Is that it? My extensive note taking prior to the yeah. podcast. You got any comments? You got any good comments you can read? Um, I mean, there's lots of good comments. I do not have any of those nothing, comments nothing pulled up your head. Okay. and ready to go. Okay. I think we should make that your job. That's you do a good job of finding those good comments. I mean, you're the you know you're already answering the comments. Yeah, but. So it would be a logical. They're all good to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, the comments are all good to me. Well, we appreciate if you made it this far. If you do think that this area might be of interest to you, we do host a Vilcabamba lifestyle retreat. Yeah. Next one is in October. Mm -hmm. um, it is a spectacular time. Um, so 
Don't take my word for it. Check out the reviews both on We Travel as well as Google Maps. Yeah. And uh, come come see if this place is right for you. It's it's an economic way to do it, and it's a way that um, expedites you know basically ten x maybe a hundred x maybe closer to accurate uh, you know your pace of learning and how quickly you're going to have all the tools, resources, information, firsthand experience, etc. that you need to not only see if this place is right for you, but ultimately to integrate and and you know have integrate seamlessly right. and set up your life here so come check that out if you're into it yeah it's it's more than just a retreat man it's i mean it's a vacation it's a vacation it's entertainment there's there's adventures there's education there's it's practical it's kind of all of that in one what's going on flops but yeah of course yeah we're 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 releasing a, a, a day from from the nine day retreat experience we're releasing a video Every other Thursday, so so next Thursday you can see day three or day two. I don't recall which day we're on, but we're releasing a day every other week for the next couple of months here. So you can gotta kind of see, you know, what each of the days includes, or at least a snapshot of it to give you some more color and context. And then we also have a couple other retreat videos that we put that are kind of a, a summary of that. But if you guys have questions, send us an email to retreats at abequador.com. We're happy to answer anything. Or if you'd like to jump on a call to, to learn more, um, but we'll put all the links below. So click the links below to, to check out everything retreat related. And we hope to see you down here in October. Oh, I thought you were going right into the tag. You want to do that? Guys. We can just end it. Yeah. Hey guys, if you've, if you've made it this far again, thank you. And I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> But if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. That really helps us out. And comment. Give us some comments. Like the video. Share it, share it with anybody that, that um, you might th- or you think might find value in the content, might be interested in this part of Ecuador. Listen to uh, two bumbling fools. Hey. Hey, now. for yourself. All right. One bumbling fool. And, uh, <laughs> um, but we hope to see you down here one day, guys. Until then. We'll see you next time. Take care, folks. Ciao, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel here. For real estate videos, click here. For content you're going to absolutely love, right here. And to find out how these crazy guys got to Ecuador, click right here.